And uh, today we have uh, another special guest. Uh, he is uh, Advocate uh, Harsh Chaturvedi, an alumni of Sidling School of Law and Governance, JNU, Jaipur National University School of Law and uh, Jaipur National University uh, School of Law and Governance, Indraprastha University School of Law and Legal Studies, enrolled as an advocate at Uttar Pradesh Bar Council, working as an associate with Mr. Devendra Chaube, advocate on record, Supreme Court of India and also working as an assistant legal advisor in Genpact Accounting Solutions Private Limited, NOIDA, with expertise in competition law, IPR, and international diplomatic relations. He is also an international speaker, having delivered lectures widely on various public and academic platforms, including University of Ottawa, Faculty of Law. Sir, uh, today would be speaking on a very uh, interesting topic, Rather, uh, I should consider it as one of the hottest topic uh, at the international platform as well as uh, the domestic platforms in India. And the topic is titled as the India Myanmar Thailand Trilateral Highway, a strategic move to counter Chinese aggression. Uh, sir, without wasting any more time, I request you to kindly take a charge uh, of the stage and please go ahead with your presentation. We are really eager to listen to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Professor Baba for introducing me with uh, such a uh, <laughs> high of words. I'd like to introduce my topic first. That is, uh, first, uh, just tell me whether you are able to see my presentation. Yes, 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 we can. Yes. OK, OK. The, the topic of the presentation is the Indian Myanmar Th uh, Thailand Trilateral Highway and a strategic move to counter Chinese aggression. So when you talk about the aggression part, so what comes in your mind, whether it should be an econ economical, whether it should be an army or army uh, thing, or it should be something else on a space or anything else. Whenever you think about the aggression, aggression comes at any point of time, whether if you are doing a, even a surgical strike on some of the other country, that comes and will be taken up as the part of aggression. Now, the meaning of aggression is always a different for each and every country. The, if we take the Chinese aggression on us, that it will, it, for us, it's an aggression. For Chinese, it's a, it's a policy that they want to claim some of the other land, which they think they, they have a mutual right or have a beneficial right on. Them. But now things do get changed. And uh, after the many years also, the, the things are not so well and the aggression definition is also not uh, properly given in many parts of the uh, thing that we must understand how the aggression should work or, or the aggression should taken into consideration is not very clear then the new new uh, thing introduced in the general assembly in 1974 where it was came with a definition under uh, Clause, general clause resolution 5133314, in which it was clearly depicted that if an armed inclusion, any type of armed inclusion, if takes place, then it will be considered as uh, aggression, aggression on some of the other country. But this definition is not even proper whenever, whenever that economical aggression, the, section, the sanction on some of the other country is also a type of aggression yet you are putting on some of the other countries, on a, the independence of any uh, other country to do the business. Now, if we talk about, now moving towards the next uh, my uh, PPT, the dispute between India and China from 2000, 1914 to 2020, it's nothing new. In the, if we talk about the uh, Chinese aggression on India, we are following it from 1914 when the Britishers directly, uh, without making uh, Chinese on a uh, more uh, happening part, but they have directly uh, in 2014 represents from Britain, the Republic of China and Tibet gathered in Shimla to negotiate a treaty that become determined the Statue of Tibet and effectively settle the border between China and British India. The Chinese unhappy had proposed at from starting only the Chinese were remain unhappy. Whatever the move we, uh, move we take, 
whatever the proposal we give in front of him they are remain unhappy with us and uh, they want that whatever the decision they make will be executed and will be uh, implemented now in 1962 war is considered which was being fought between india and china the tension rose throughout 1950s whether the if we consider that this uh, this is the falls of uh, jawaharlal nehru regime uh, for diplomatic policy then we can say that yes we can say, we can quote this uh, 1962 war as best example for the diplomacy failure because we are in a mood that yes we are uh, proposing a friendship hand and the chinese are also in a mood of friendship hand but we cannot uh, we cannot uh, take out something that yes chinese has uh, gone somewhere else at thinking of something else we fail to uh, fail to uh, take out that was the uh, bloody and dirty mind is thinking of and the tension rose throughout the chinese insisted that tibet tibet was never a independent could not sign a treaty creating there is also a very good point that is the tibet is in uh, 1962 war was fought because of the tibet issue also because we have given a uh, uh, started giving a permanent international status to tibet and we are also uh, started that yes uh, the each and everything whatever the tibet is a independent nation and the, whatever the the uh, decision they want to take on the international policy they can take now there were several failed attempts of peaceful negotiation there is always a peaceful negotiation we always talk first we always talk in a move the china sought the control critical roadways near its western frontier in xiaojian india and its western allies saw any attempt at chinese intrusion as a part of wider plot to ex- export moist style communism across the region by 1962 war had broken out chinese troops crossed the mcmahon line and took a position deep inside indian territory the failure of which we cannot defend our boundaries is that we cannot we do not have the infrastructure to mobilize our forces properly we do not have that much of capability that yes that we can fight a full fledged war against china if you have heard of Mr. major shaitan singh story the person with a company of only 120 120 uh, uh, com- uh, the people fought against the chinese intrusion of about 22500 soldiers coming in front of it and then also he fought so with a so much of bravery that the 13000 casualty were we suffered by the uh, chinese side and to honor the bravery you must see the honor the bravery of indian soldiers they have put the uh, uh, sheets on the bodies of the indian soldier so that it cannot get uh, uh, degrade uh, degrade or decompose in very in the harsh condition of the ladakh region now next thing is next point we going to have is 1967 in sikkim india pushes back china back when you see the next war it's not a war we can say it's a type of inclusion which chinese want to do but in nathula and chola the which connected the sikkim there uh, we have fought a very good war and we have pushed back the, the chinese in a very good, uh, in a more effective manner what we have failed to do in 1962 now in this here we have put the all the uh, we have killed uh, 150 indians and 340 chinese were killed the clash chapter uh, clash in september october 1967 those passes will later be considered second all out war between it will be considered as the all out war between china and india but india prevailed destroying chinese fortification in nathula and forced them back and in only is the nathula and chola region is there where we have the proper demarcation of the uh, boundary between india and china with proper uh, uh, fencing and proper gateways so that no uh, both the sides will be remain in their position and no cross uh, cross border inclusion can be take place 
Now the next part which we are going to consider is 1987 crisis averted. In 97, 1987, the Indian military was conducting a training operation to see how fast it will move the border. A large number of troops materialing arrived next to Chinese outposts, surprised Chinese commander who responded by advancing towards what they considered the line of actual control. Realizing that the potential to inevitably start a war, both India and China de-escalate and crisis was averted. In 1987, with the practice to move the China, uh, the Indian army as how we can move the Indian army as fast as we could into the border areas. So the practice was being taken, but the Chinese outposts think that we are in a, a situation of war. So they have outnumbered the uh, troops on their side also, so that the things can be properly maintained and but after a diplomatic meeting and a flag meeting this can this india and china face off face off will be de-escalated now the next part next history of the part is on the 2013 standoff sorry in 2013 standoff at dollar Bay holding after decades of patrolling the border, Chinese platoon pitched a camp near Dolok Bay. Now, here is the situation get starting worse. And when the, uh, the Chinese side has posted up a uh, camp near Dolok Bay area, and they have started showing us that it's our area, you must go back. We have occupied it, and th this is the saying, this is our territory. And the same way, Indian soldiers also started raising the flags and the banners that, yes, it's our territory, it's not your territory. You must go and dismantle the areas of, in your position. In 2017, Dolok Lam stand -off. In June 2017, Chinese set up a working building in road, sorry, in, in a road in the Dolok, Dolok Lam flat, an area of Himalayan control, not by India, but it's an ally of Bhutan. It's a very famous thing which was been there in Dolaknam standoff, in which the Bhutan uh, has uh, Bhutan in, uh, in India has come up with a very strong support of Bhutan and also given a strike warning to uh, to the Chinese counterpart that if any escalation or any inclusion take place, we are ready to fought any kind of war. The next is which we are now witnessing is 2020 Landak standoff. In May, milits broke out several times. The uh, Chinese in, uh, Chinese uh, uh, started including in the boundary, and it was been many, it was a shame also that the Indian politicians, many other Indian politicians, has taken up uh, opportunity to criticize the ongoing uh, government, ruling government. But the thing is that. When we are supposed to work in a together position, we must add something, we must suggest the ongoing ruling government. We have started that, yes, you have in a fault that your troops are not in a better position. You must do this, you must do that. But only criticizing, not giving the solution that, yes, how we can de-escalate the things. In May, to, in clash was being there, Glacier like Pongdon also, Indian troops were badly injured, had to evacuate it by the helicopter. This was a famous uh, thing which happened, which where both the sides uh, get so much of casualties. We lost uh, 20 brave soldiers and they also lost many other things as per uh, uh, one international media uh, has quoted that they have lost about 30 to 34. 30-40 40 soldiers, but they are as a they have a tradition not to claim because they have a new uh, friend, which is Pakistan. So may, maybe they have taken some good things from Pakistan. They never to claim that yes we have done something wrong, and with yes we have done a, a problematic thing for the other the country. So they have taken some good things from Pakistan to never to claim their uh, uh, faults. Now, China blasted into force, dumped trucks, excavators, troops carried artillery, armored vehicles inside, experts said. What was clearly that it was most serious clash between two sides since 2017 and a having a and deadly confrontation to come. Now, the possible reason why in China has deployed deployment in the LOC was 
India decision to strengthen its border infrastructure, that is, Norbok, Shawbok, Dolok, Bek, Oldi Road. It's a very important strategic road which was to be constructed much earlier, but is much, much and much earlier. But after 2014, it was really get completed because the previous governments uh, uh, before 2015. 14, the previous government do not take any steps to really improve the border infrastructure. I am sorry to say maybe some of the person, people are there who think that no, 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 each and every government has taken its proper steps, but I don't think so because the, if you see that standoff of the uh, standoff of the uh, diplomatic policy played by the previous governments, not a very crucial and what a very standoff and very active decision was never been taken off. Now, India, United States, Seattle, example, court and made U US China tensions. Now, India, the U United States, Seattle, uh, India is its court. And this, this may be also be considered as the U uh, in China inclusion on in uh, inclusion aggression against India. As the China views India assertion regarding Gilgit Balistan and implicitly attack on China Pakistan economic corridor, China flagship program. Now, is the fear between India, between Pakistan and China that if and if, that in these roads and the, the border infrastructure, what India is developing is uh, maybe used as a direct assertion on the roads which road which has been built in the POK. Uh, that is uh, China Econo Pakistan Economic Corridor, that uh, sky chain part and the POK part. In a phrase or in a context, has said uh, that South China Sea matter is uh, should be uh, in a should be solved in a dialogue manner. But yes, India has also developed some interest. In, now, after so many times uh, in the South China Sea, the political tension with due to COVID-19 pandemic, yes, it's a thing that uh, each and every world is suffering from, from China. Maybe China denies that it's not a, gen uh, the virus is not created by them. It's a genetic virus, it's a generic virus, but everybody knows the truth, even the Chinese diplomacy also. Because if we talk about the generic virus uh, thing, it's a very old and very old tradition to have a war with a virus, virus wars. When a king used to uh, uh, affect the uh, when a king when a one king do not uh, have that much of power or that much of uh, stand in the uh, to fight a direct conflict with other countries, they used to what they used uh, other uh, kings they they used to plant a virus or uh, sometimes some plagues. So that they can weaken their population to fight or to uh, revert back in any of the other aggressive circumstances. India has been growing power in Asian region. That's also a very uh, point that needs to be considered that India is uh, utmostly growing power in Asian region and China do not want any other competition in Asian region to come in the path of their, its progress. Now, next tense is what after this inclusion, what India does. Military, if we talk about the military thing, India moved an additional division of tanks, artillery across LSC to match Chinese deployment. deployment. Further, India has approved the purchase of 33 Russian fighter jets and upgrade, upgrade 59 war planes at a cost of 18,148 crores. 18,148 crores. Rest are classified and do not want to discuss the details of this uh, purchase because it's a classified material and it's a public platform. And this video can go anywhere or at, uh, at any point of time. On 10 September, India captures many fin uh, finger four area and establishes near by heights, post and nearby heights. In 12 September, India captures many posts near Kailash Mansaro. Now, from 10 September, the change of the the thing, the change of diplomacy that uh, what we call is the turn. The table has been turned. The first time in the history, the India has 
given a aggressive uh, aggressive stand against indian uh, chinese positions and they have captured the four singapore areas and many crucial heights about 30 heights they have captured and the rest is classified 12 september india captures many posts near kalash mansarovar also so the half of the it's determined and the reports have said that the kalash mansarovar position is also being under the position of india now as per the economic uh, response we have taken is by citing the emergence nature of threat we have banned many chinese origin apps tiktok share what this whatever there is and further india trade deficit with china fell to 48.6 billion in 2020 to account in declining imports now the china, india what india has done that the uh, india indian prime minister has stated that you must go atmanirbhar and started the policy of atmanirbhar bharat so that that the dependency on the chinese could should be get decreased we have so much each and every we know that we cannot de uh, decrease uh, the level of uh, chinese uh, uh, influence and implementation and uh, technological level which is now in india but yes we can give them a hard shape by decreasing the uh, involvement in our gadgets and uh, many other things how about the tension on the border as well as the covid-19 pandemic which throw the light of economic dependencies on china now the best thing is that he uh, as covid-19 is considered a covid-19 pandemic is considered is not a very it's a deal which was being given by the china to each and every country in the world that yes we are uh, manufacturing a virus you get affected and then uh, when you want a curable thing to, just to cure things then we will supply the your medical equipments also now this is a very positive and a very uh, profitable uh, choice played by the chinese but it was been uh, thing is that that india is a first country who has taken out this thing that something uh, uh, dependencies on the chinese product and the quality which they are giving to us is not matchable so what india has started it started manufacturing its own medical equipments and it's a very great opportunity and very great to know that uh, that india became self reliant in many things that for example mask making for uh, uh, that uh, iv making and many other medical equipments which can uh, there is a long list which can, we can discuss afterwards so there is now the foreign direct investment from china as india has dipped to 1.63.78 million in 1920 for 2220 million so 1890 now these are the maps which we want to discuss there is a situation which is going on in galwan you can see in the map clearly that how things are pretty much uh, taken place and why often flares up why these areas are always in a height of conflict because the main reason for the chinese inclusion is that that china want to protect the economic corridor which was passing uh, on the above side which was been uh, as a Uh, thing which if it it is get stopped then china may going to lose a billions of dollars economic uh, goes into a billion dollar economic loss so the main ladakh we can say that the ladakh main ladakh stand up is because of this now the line of uh, line of actual control at the pongdong tasso first located there is a fingers point which you can see on the map here we have the base the china lsc china and other indian parts here is the finger four point which was where heights are there which we have captured most of the heights we have captured again now come to the our topic that is indian myanmar thailand trilateral highway a strategic move to counter chinese aggression firstly we have discussed why these inclusion why is the need of this uh, steps to be taken by the indian side to develop something and the improvement of technological advancement or to look into some uh, the uh, the chinese weaker point with, to counter him 
as as fast as more aggressive way as possible now the trilateral agreement with the in a view is present the futuristic strategic importance to tackle the aggression from the country who wanted to become a superpower by suppressing other through deterrence strategy and showing number games in and its army strength whose journals itself doubt about the capability of full fledged war with no one to support her as a real friend the the chinese diplomacy is under the, the verge of failure also because when you do not have the friends to support you you cannot go directly on a war with other countries you must have some of the other backing with you or some of the other support with you that yes if you become a little bit weak or if you are losing in some of the po- other point the there should be some of the real friend who can help you out in that by providing even by the manpower or by the tactical supports now uh, the highway has become most bold move by the india so many years of independence that yes the india has this highway has also the most bold move which i am on to consider is that because after so many years of independence we have not uh, ever taken up any aggressive mood against our enemies but after that we had thinking in the other slots also that yes we need something that yes we can counter the aggression aggressive mood or aggression mood taken up by these other parties in today's world tradition war in today's world tradition what study does not have a stake what we used to have this uh, in mind that always a war should be fought in between face to face man that's not a very good thing that war should the war strategy or the tactic should be now in the era of technology should be changed and should be modern, uh, modernized and the tactical war should be tactical war should be fought because if you want face to face is very a last intrusion the last thing to to be considered first you have to find out the weaknesses of the other party or, or your enemy and the weaknesses you only can to find out when you move some tactic you use or implement new tactic tactics of war by inclusion of new uh, technology new radars the construction take uh, have a friendship with the enemies of that country and uh, develop their uh, develop uh, develop their infrastructure and train them if you want to have a uh, uh, if uh, there is situation of a direct conflict then you can think that these these uh, countries is going to help you have a backing in your uh, war implementation and war uh, uh, going on wars A Indian Manwar Thailand travel is a highway constructed under India Look East policy. Now I am going to in, uh, discuss this India Look East policy also. That will connect Mora India and Mysore Thailand via Myanmar, Nepal, Madhya Bangkok, 55 kilometers, 34 mile route consisting of Nepal Mandalay, 584 kilometers, 366 mile, and a Mandalay Bangkok. Thirteen one thousand three hundred ninety-seven kilometers is a highway good condition except from one zero one part one twenty-four long cable stretch being upgraded to two lanes in each direction total lanes four highway by the end. The road is expected to boost trade and commerce in Asian India free trade area as well as with the rest of South Asia. India has laws also proposed extending the highway to Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and proposed three thousand two hundred kilometers road from India to Vietnam is known as the East-West Economic Corridor. This highway will also connect to the major port develop along with the Bay, Kalyan, Kaimogi, and Mova Chinwa Chinwin River. India and Asia have planned to extend its routes. to laos cambodia vietnam as this connectivity will generate annually an estimated us 70 billion us dollars in incremental gdp and 20 million incremental aggregate employment by 2025 in india has offered 1 billion line up of credit for the indian asian connectivity project now the next part which i would like to discuss is 
and which inclusion of uh, which includes involvement of this point is india acts east policy and the prime minister of india visited thailand in 2019 for east asia summit and regional comprehensive economic partnership summit the visit was intended for india to finalize the recp treaty india expressed many concern regarding the signing of trade deal is an unfavorable balance of trade non expand acceptance of auto triggered mechanism and protection of domestic industry dairy steel lack of consensus and rules of origin etc however rbcg invokes strong economic linkage of india south asian and eastern which is a core of indian act east policy how act east policy is different from look east policy now we have to see the difference Now, look, East policy focus on association of Southeast Asian nation in countries plus economic integration. Now, India became the dialogic partner of Asia in 1996 summit level partner in 2000. In 2012, the relationship got up to upgraded into strategic partnership in 2012. The time when India launched look, East policy in 1992, India trade and Asian was two billion. After signing the free trade in 2010. With Asian and trade uh, grown to seventy-two billion, India is also active participant in several region forum like Asian uh, East Asia Summit, Asian Region Forum, forum etc. Act Act East policy focused on Asian country plus economic integration plus Asian East Asian countries plus security cooperation. Prime Minister in India highlighted four C of act east policy culture commerce connectivity capacity building security is a important dimension of east act policy in a context of growing chinese assertiveness in the south china sea the main motive in the context of growing chinese assertiveness in the south china sea and the indian ocean country freedom of navigation indian own role in the indian ocean is a key feature of act east policy in person of this india has been engaged in a narrative in indo pacific and former group of called quad now indo pacific region which we like to consider in in order to counter chinese assertive in south china sea and indian ocean the indo term pacific gained prominence the first time the in term indo pacific was used by chinese prime minister shinzo abe in 2007 according to him it is connectivity between indian ocean and the pacific ocean the main main and main thing which needs to be taken up here is that each and every agreement signed between indo and pacific region is somehow or the some way is focus on the aggression which was been uh, taken up by the china and the aggression move which was being built up by the chinese chinese uh, political party at uh, chinese liberation army the main problem which each and of these countries are facing nowadays which uh, other uh, these uh, Jap japan south korea and other vietnam thailand myanmar is the thing is that whenever they want to execute anything when they want to have anything in their region and the waters they which they claim for so many years the china objects objects with deterrence objects with military objects with economic objects with each and every face which whatever they want to establish there however the president of united states sorry re inaugurate the term indo pacific by eas summit 2007 through then the cooperation to increase the cooperation with uh, with these countries and the us india partnership that malabar exercise was also being conducted multilateral military exercise like marama was also be conducted to increase the enforcement and increase the cooperation and to show that you china that you are not the party you are not any one to tell any of these other nations that you have any deterrence policy and you can claim whatever you want to claim 
now dealing with china india has to cope up with different strategies to china that's true and you have to build up on one hand china is encircling india through sterling of pearls building china pakistan economic corridor through disputed territory between india and pakistan on the other hand china wants india to be on its side on issues like climate change globalization etc also china des- india desires that its foreign policy or multi alignment should not make china apprehensive of india being a member of anti china alliance led by the us it's always a thing which we must appreciate that india doesn't want someone to get uh, disturbed with the policy or anything but the thing is that now india has in previous year now uh, india has changed its totally its policy that yes they have to maintain or they have to protect its interest whether it's in south china sea or whether it's in indian ocean now tackling of china first is uh, previous was dealing with china now is tackling of tackling with china as like china is showing its assertiveness in indian ocean india must increase its engagement in the south china sea which india is started doing with this uh, trilateral highway and the increasement of this highway will give a very very benefited uh, return to india and also a benefiting reply to chinese inclusion in this context india engagement to with quad asian countries step to the right direction india and vietnam vietnam are collaborating in oil exploration in south china sea which china has its claim of sovereignty now i'd like to tell you something that vietnam has given a ongoing setup to india that yes you must come dig oil with a cooperation with uh, both the countries and also set up a permanent uh, navy base or any th- trilateral base so that the vietnam army do also get the opportunity to, to get trained and also to get uh, the equipments which they need to counter the chinese aggression similar to china developing ports in indian ocean india with indonesia is developing a port called sabang near the strait of malacca the now the Ch- it was mean a long long back the similar to china that indonesia and india are developing some, something is called strait of malacca in strait of malacca and one more project is being constructed in strait of malacca between china and thailand but it's a stake of indian diplomacy that thailand has cancel all the projects related to strait of malacca with china and it was been recently done by the thailand uh, thailand government because china has a very 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 dirty policy of holding a debt to a country a policy of debt country where they used to control each and everything workforce economy uh, economic investment everything and then they are going to give you the bill that yes you have this bill now you pay you need to pay off in this much uh, amount of years and this is going to give them the and this is the policy where the patent the victim country not able to get that yes that much of quality has been installed in that project or not or it has been betrayed or not because they have a huge amount of uh, bill in front of them and now they feel now they are going to face the econo- start facing the economic crisis and that time india china uh, started blackmailing them started uh, restricting their uh, economic uh, benefits and and if you want to see the right example of this then you must consider the china maldive policy maldive is a country and, uh, and one more that is uh, china and mauritius both these countries have made, uh, installed the chinese project given the contract to the chinese project and now they are facing the hazardous economic situation 
and now they are running towards india that yes you must pay our bills because we do not have that much of capability or money to pay the so much of debt now india being in such a position that now uh, the pandemic situation is also going on still india held the mauritian and maldive government with some of the amount of the installments payable to the chinese government but does this policy is going to very beneficial for india yes in some other way india do can take some profits from these countries as setting up some projects or giving a business opportunity to these countries so that they can invest or have a, a workforce exchange programs with india in recently the indian prime minister put an indo pacific ocean initiative to save and secure stable maritime domain now the maritime domain is also a very important thing to stabilize the economy if you have a look, what um, if you see the map of the world we always see that if we want to go somewhere uh, and the uh, south china if you want to do some business in the south china sea now we have to go around all these countries and move then we able to move uh, at the point of south china sea we are need to cross all these laos cambodia and each and every country then only we can move uh, towards south china sea on the outer part outer crossing but if we develop a maritime domain or if we develop something what we call as uh, canals in between ship canals in between these countries then we can have a more quicker way of doing ease of business and the ships and many uh, large uh, containers can move very easily in between these uh, uh, countries and with the uh, uh, through the way of uh, uh, river transport or through the canal transport which india has proposed to the thailand also to come to face this now the trilateral highway path through part of look east policy it's a part of uh, look east policy now it will link to countries like south asian countries and land give a boost to trade business health education and tourism ties among the three countries is a, a thing that it will facilitate the education tourism trade business health thing in the in this whole region now they it will connect mora india mato thailand via myanmar we have already discussed this and it is going to be a motor vehicle agreement along with protocols for regulating facility moving cargo and passenger vehicle traffic is under intergovernmental negotiation between india myanmar and thailand now what you need to know is that why this is so important for india as well as myanmar as well as thailand now this construction of road it's a four lane road if it gets constructed now the boost of economy these two three countries are going to get is much and much larger what they are right now doing the business what they are right now doing. now the thing is that whenever there is a road connectivity the development of every phase of that road and the area belong to that road is high boosting and gets a equivalent opportunity to get develop and the uh, the approachment of uh, quality of the product gets much easier now do we have to know this how it's going to counter the china the main uh, main focus of today's uh, today's topic how is going to counter the china the thing is that whenever there is a road connectivity you can easily move troops from one place to another and secondly when as the india has with both these countries and these both both these countries are also facing chinese aggression one or the other part now how they are going to get benefit of that indian government had proposed that they are going to develop uh, institutions military training facilities and other things so that these both the, uh, other countries and other asian countries who wants to join the uh, in uh, this collaboration trilateral this highway 
do also get the benefit of this highway. Now, the National Highway Authority of India is appointed as a technical executive agency projecting management consultant. It will also four lane highway by approximately 13,360 uh, kilometers, 850 miles. Now, other countries like Indonesia, Laos, Cambodia, Philippines, and most surprisingly, Taiwan will also want to join hands with shown their interest in this agreement. As India has opened this agreement for new partners, and they are even ready to give birthing rights to Indian Navy and infrastructure establishment to Indian Air Force and Indian Army if everything goes well. The thing is that these countries all are facing the main problem is Chinese inclusion in their land or Chinese deterrence. Now, how they want, they want some other country, some big country who has the potential to fight on the fight with this Chinese inclusion to be on their side. We, we can say that US is doing, US is, uh, US is also there, who is doing the same thing, uh, but these countries want some someone with a most more and more trustworthy person. So they have switched over to India, right, rather uh, going with an agreement or something or the other with the US, US policies makers also. Because India gives more and more benefiting uh, projects than the US. So there's a slight shift in the leadership. In these Asian countries, these regional countries, these South Asian countries, want, uh, South, uh, South China Sea, con uh, China uh, surrounding countries want that India should be the leader and we must follow them. Um, now, South Korea and Japan want to establish a permanent sea road link under this agreement. These both countries have a very good relationship with India. And now they want that if this whole highway gets completed till Vietnam, then they have a very good opportunity to establish a permanent sea road link so that their cargo, which takes so long to reach Indian seaports and the business to reach sea, Indian seaports, they can be easily uh, transported from one place to another. This project will boost trade and commerce in the Asian India free trade area as well as with the rest of the South Asia. Now, question must be raised whether trilateral have a only have trade or business and enterprise motive. Uh, uh, yes, we can say that, but it has much more than the only trade and business uh, enhancement motive. Because here, India wants that some or the other thing must be developed, the infrastructural project must be developed in the, these friendly countries, so that whenever there is the point when there is a direct conflict or India wants some uh, profitable things, from these countries, I want some uh, uh, inclusion or uh, South China Sea also in uh, not an inclusion, but a profitable uh, gain in the uh, South China Sea. Then they have this uh, trilateral or the more this extent of this trilateral highway will be helpful to whether that said most is sufficient to counter Chinese aggression. No. It cannot be sufficient to counter Chinese aggression because the Chinese aggression is not such a, such a small thing which we can have, uh, which we can counter with this uh, small scale project. We have to think more and more. Uh, uh, we have to install more and more projects. We have to develop more and more uh, infrastructure alongside border so that the uh, movement of troops, movement of uh, other materials can be done more and more easily and more and more effectively. Whether is a move to counter Chinese economic corridor? Yes, it's a move to counter Chinese economic corridor because China wants to encircle and trap India in an, this Chinese economic corridor because if it it's encircle the India, it can control the Indian maritime trade with, uh, trade fair. And once 
the first uh, once this con uh, once the china started controlling this economic thing then it, india is under a very high risk uh, very high risk of losing economic as well as many uh, important position in this uh, sea also in the land, uh, many areas of land also whether india has a profitable interest in south china sea yes it has a profitable interest in south china sea as india is right now is uh, in the cooperation with vietnam to have a oil rig to set up a oil rig and also set up a uh, uh, other base, other uh, mineral enhancement thing and uh, mine extraction things in the south china sea now whether india is playing a war game against india uh, china i think so we can say that it's a war game against china but to really if we, india wants to really implement and really, really get succeed in this war game then india has to develop its potential and its capability and lessen out its dependency on chinese things whether faster mobility and greater accessibility makes army deployment easier and more efficient yes we can say, uh, we ha we have seen this once the uh, road road connectivity has been properly installed in the dalakman region and other ladakh also we have seen the much easier uh, movability and greater accessibility of the indian army to this region and once this project which we are right now talking about this also gets completed indian army can indian army and indian forces can have a much greater deployment and access accessibility in these regions also who needs a greater help to uh, and seeing uh, as a uh, worrying uh, uh, as a uh, as a way that yes india should be a leader of our uh, uh, leader and must represent uh, these countries in the world forum against the chinese by the training equipment militaries of these country come under the indian military future strategic thinking yes the in indian military has changed the thinking of the future strategic that's a very good thing which india has done which needs to be done much earlier but yes india has turned the policy of the futuristic thinking and strategic thinking and equipping and training these these countries military is going to help india also as whenever there is some uh, requirement of manpower or requirement of any uh, uh, help from these countries these countries can also work as a uh, push up or as a uh, backup point for india to uh, to uh, reply any of the chinese inclusion or anything but the inclusion of new countries affected the chinese aggression is created burden on chinese diplomacy yes the we can say that the chinese diplomacy is under a very very downfall right now because many of the countries are now against him after this pandemic situation has been raised and the secondly the aggression and the deterrence thing which the chinese are showing right now is totally a self destructive thing which the chinese diplomacy is on the world because if you keep on doing these types of tactics one uh, tactics this tactics can be cannot be a long term tactics they can be used at the short term but cannot be a long term but what you are going to do is that you going to create a long term enemies then and long term enemies then are long, uh, short term uh, weaker and a deterrent uh, victims so the india need to change the policy need to change the upbringing and need to counter more effectively to the chinese aggression and to the chinese uh stability and chinese uh, cross section now if you have any question i am ready to answer Thank you so much uh, for your very informative uh, lecture, sir. Now uh, the forum is open uh, for questions. Uh, questions start pouring in. I just want to 
uh, share something with all of you and with our respected sir also. On, un on one hand, uh, we have uh, we have been executing a policy of uh, actist, uh, locust into actist, and uh, we have uh, constructed uh, this uh, the project, a very great project called uh, the Friendship Road, that actually shows the ambitions of India, the strategic ambitions, economic ambitions. But on the other hand, if you take a look at what China is doing uh, with Nepal, they have also constructed one friendship road that connects Kathmandu with Lhasa. At the same time, China has been involved in uh, road and belt initiative uh, with Pakistan. And as uh, you know, Advocate Chaturvedi, you rightly mentioned that uh, one of the reasons of the standoff is also to protect the economic uh, interest uh, of China. So I'm just wondering that uh, how long will it go like this? On one hand, uh, China is uh, economically influencing us. On the other hand, China is uh, taking all the possible steps to uh, militarily challenging us. And we are giving counters, you know, at the same time, China is having its own uh, internal problems also, the problems of, you know, the Tibetan Autonomous Region, that is TAR, then problem of Xinjiang, the Uyghur, uh, the Uyghur population. So basically, China is also not that, uh, I should say, uh, you know, the way it has been projected that uh, the Chinese dragon or something like that. China has serious internal problems also. Okay. So considering all the possibilities and considering all the economic, cultural and political dynamics, how do you see the future of China, not only just in the context of India, but also in the context of the Southeast Asia, the South Asia, as well as the Europe? What would be your take on it? See, as per the policy is considered and the ch what China is playing the game, I don't think that they are going to survive for very long. But what they can, uh, they are only playing the number games. The war, as per the war is considered, they are on a uh, uh, military, the size of the military is much greater. And they are, maybe their uh, capability of fi firing power is under a question, uh, but their numbers are increased. So they are actually, we, if we think of a uh, historical perspective, they are uh, the, working on the policy of uh, uh, deterring with uh, not so deterring, but uh, yes, we can have that much of capable uh, thing. But as for the future is concerned, of this deterrence policy, I don't think that uh, China is going to uh, move this policy a much higher in a much higher way, because now the uh, country is getting aware of the Chinese policy and they are uh, switching and cutting off uh, the Chinese projects and also uh, moving towards uh, other uh, more profitable and more uh, beneficial uh, projects which was being offered by the Indian counterparts and the US other counterparts. So we can say that uh, the diplomacy which was being played by the China and the, uh, right now and what they are pl planning to do in the future also is not going to help them very well. It's going to create more enemies. That's true. But when they are going to verge of fall down, there's no, no one is there to help them. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Krishnan, do you have any question? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, besides the infrastructure part of it, uh, do you think that India or uh, Prime Minister Modi is considering Myanmar and Thailand are part of the Northeast, his Northeast policy to look into the resource aspect like coil? and also to look into insurgency aspect because both Myanmar as well as Thailand also have are also affected by the insurgency aspect of it. Do you think that uh, they are using, I mean, Modi is using these two countries as part of Northeast policy to counter insurgency as well as China? Sir, if uh, we can consider this as uh, Modi's policy to counter the insurgency against these uh, 
uh, Thailand and China, if we uh, sorry, that uh, Myanmar and uh, Thailand, if we consider, we can say that the Modi's policy of inclusion, we yes, it's a part of, but uh, as for the oil and other things are considered. As yes, as we can say that it's a profitable thing, we can go for the profitable thing. But right now, the main focus is on Chinese inclusion. We are right now not thinking that yes, we can take out some profitability of oil and something else. We are having a one project with Vietnam, but not a very uh, uh, development project of oil and something with uh, these countries. Right now, we are much. Uh, Involved, uh, we are involved in uh, much in the infrastructure development, rather oil and other profitable things. Uh, okay, so his question was whether uh, the Chinese policy, uh, or rather the the counter policy that uh, the government of India has developed to counter the Chinese aggression, will it have any impact on the dynamics of the northeast i'm sure you must be aware about uh, the issues that uh, the northeast has been facing since last 60 years so maybe dr krishna wanted to ask that question whether uh, this uh, the chinese policies and uh, our counter to that right whether will it have any beneficial uh, influence on the area of northeast like for example uh, if you could take a report uh, taken out by one uh, parliamentary committee, uh, especially in connection with uh, uh, this uh, Myanmar Friendship Road. Okay, it has specifically mentioned about the economic development of the Northeast Corridor, the Chicken Neck Corridor, right? So, what is your take on it? Surely, it is going to develop the Northeast side and the inclusion, which uh, right now the, the economic corridor which is being made is from Delhi to that uh, North is also covering the Northeast portion also. So we can take that, yes, uh, this is going to develop the areas which are not, uh, which always been neglected by the in, uh, Indian governments for so long. And also the, we can uh, have uh, a better infrastructure development and the road connectivity uh, issues will be get resolved as in many areas of these Northeast as still un not under a railway connectivity. And other airports connectivity is are still under not in a very good uh, we will consider as a very uh, better way, manner. So we can think uh, that yes, this uh, will be uh, a, a move uh, to develop these regions also. But uh, simultaneously, we can also say that uh, the development always comes when there is an implementation of things. As per the Modi government is considered. Uh, the economy part of the Modi government is not uh, right now is not in a very good state, and uh, the uh, what they are planning and what they are implementing is uh, having a, some uh, conflict with each other also. Once they plan, they implement, and after that uh, they they are shortage of funds and everything. So the main issue which they are facing is also that the implementation is uh, implementation is there but the economically they, their implementation is not so helpful related to that uh, as per the policy of the modi government is good like, uh, but uh, we cannot say it's where better or uh, it has to be dependent on the futuristic uh, future that uh, whether this highway is going to really help us out or not right 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 thank you so much uh, here i can see uh, dr devrata sutradhar is also there he has done some research work on boulder hearts uh, dr devrata do you want to uh, ask any question because you have done one research on boulder hearts actually i was also thinking uh, you know regarding when it, when the policies of the uh, you know the, the lucas policy has come into being right when it comes to the economic development the, the border hearts uh, you know are going to play an important role. So do you want to ask any question to Advocate Chaturvedi, if you are there? Dr. Devrata, are you there? OK, maybe my voice is not uh, reaching to him. Uh, OK, one question is coming up, I guess. OK, our own Aviveti, Madam, uh, 
uh, her question is has come she is asking thank you sir it was an enlightening presentation loaded with lots of information i just want to bring a quick interjection do you agree that india lacks a full fledged long term policy with neighboring countries particularly the south east asian and south asian countries i do agree with you that chinese have played a dirty politics around the south china sea and on the side and on the other side i assume india failed to build trust with neighboring countries what is your take on it see as per the things uh, that uh, india the, as per the question i am going to answer uh, the india lacks the full uh, flesh long term policy uh, it's totally depends on the will and uh, will and uh, will on the government that how much they wants to take this policy i know that there is uh, some instances that uh, a uh, very big instances is right now in front of us when we consider the char bar thing that firstly we are shown so much of interest in the uh, in the development of the char bar port and everything that even some opportunity to other sites also to have a uh, inclusion or have a take out some opportunities on the the project which was been left by the india what uh, which uh, if you see the Mal uh, maldives and mauritius things also when indian companies stop investing in these places then only the chinese influence get increased and once the china uh, the in, uh, india's again started uh, the supporting hand uh, towards these countries the chinese inclusion gets automatically get decreased because we have a more uh, if we can if we consider we have a more uh, uh, trustful hand but with the as per the policy is considered uh, we cannot say uh, we cannot say that yes we have a long term uh, benefiting policy or so and other things once the government changed we come up with new thoughts and uh, there's a, his, a very bad thing which is which is going on in india that the previous governments uh, never uh, uh, when a, never uh, give a very good and uh, what we call it as uh, importance to the the project installed by the previous governments right right i i really do agree with you to some extent because if you take an example of the history of india's foreign policy right that starts with uh, you know pandit jawaharlal nehru uh, right from uh, the incident happened of uh, tibet being taken away by china till uh, this uh, you know the contested standoff i guess uh, we have we have uh, come a really a long way okay but unfortunately the strong foundation that requires to be laid down all right that strong foundation have not been laid down and on the in this context i i want to uh, quote uh, something just uh, give me one minute and uh, i'll i'll quote something this is uh, one of the quotes that uh, dr uh, b r ambedkar quoted and it was a direct criticism uh, to pandit uh, jawaharlal nehru's uh, china policy here uh, dr ambedkar quoted in uh, one of his speeches that the prime minister has been depending upon what may be called the panchashil taken by mr mao and recorded in the tibet treaty of non aggression well i am somewhat surprised that the prime minister should take this panchashil seriously the panchashil as you sir know it well is the essential part of the buddhist religion if mr mao had any faith in the panchashil he would certainly treat the buddhist in his country in a way different way there is no room for panchashil in politics and secondly not in the politics of a communist country the communist countries have no morality today's morality is not tomorrow's morality this is dr ambedkar's word and which turned out to be reality in 1962 so my my question is that considering because see, in order to understand the present we have we really have to understand the past right and as uh, you know you have rightly mentioned that we failed to lay down the strong foundation okay in terms of our asiatic interest in terms of our china policy we got so entrapped in non alignment movement 
that our non-alignment movement is now defunct. Where is that non-alignment movement gone? It's 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 boom. It's nowhere exist, right? So what is your take on it? I mean, how badly we affected because of uh, because of uh, non-interest, which has been shown by uh, I would not I would not say a previous government, but the initial government right after the independence, we failed to uh, give a proper uh, structure uh, to our India's foreign policy. Uh, is it true? Do you agree with me? What is your take on it? See, I can uh, if the foreign policy is being considered. It's a uh, policy of one. Uh, uh, we cannot say that this policy can uh, go forward as uh, the one person has also asked whether this can the foreign policy can be taken into a long term basis. See, the foreign policy changes with the mood of the country. Many times we see that uh, maybe the interest of the uh, many things, uh, ma many countries are there in some in. Uh, in some area or in some place, but as they lose that India, see, India is not something that uh, has to follow the tradition, old tradition that yes, uh, uh, friendship is a deed and friendship is a need and friendship is deed. So the thing is that India do have some profitable interest in some region and do not and do switches at uh, the right to switches its policy towards some uh, something else. It doesn't need to carry on things uh, yes uh, uh, as a tradition which we are uh, or long following uh, for, for uh, following for very long that uh, the friendship should be carried whether there is a loss or whether there is a profit but this is not the way, this is not the way the mark, uh, main uh, diplomacy is going to work now the how things get changed you have rightly quoted the br um, uh, dr br ambedkar thing but the thing is that that only we are saying uh, the previous question we had just laid down that one uh, road has been constructed in between uh, in uh, Nepal and China. So Nepal is also facing the same thing that the communist government is taking a charge and uh, charge uh, as a ruling government. And now they are favoring the another communist com uh, government to construct the road. Whether they are not concerned that there is a human cry in the Nepal and India's keep on warning Nepal that you must listen to your people is going to where is going to create a civil war situation in your country, and maybe they are not listening and not working on that. So this is nothing that we yes we have failed in some point we have failed to deliberately and have a long stand relationship with the other countries. But the thing is that we are living in a we are living in a world where the profit speaks the relationship. Your relationship, when there is a profit, then only your relationship goes on. And when is the, there is no profit, your relationships do get hampered. Because India is not such a position that they keep on donating things and do not get some uh, uh, anything from the other country. Yes, we can help them. In simultaneously, we must get something either with the diplomatic support or either either a land support or some of the mineral support. We can give them the room uh, to have a, a special privilege, but we cannot uh, uh, have a we cannot give them the, uh, the permanent uh, establishment that yes, whatever you do will be considered as as a, a, a long term relationship and whatever you want to. Uh, implement will be considered as a long term. We will keep on going on with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any other question? The floor is just uh, yeah, please. Yes, sir. yeah, just in the period of uh, in the January 2020, uh, China had signed an agreement with uh, with Myanmar. Uh, with regards to Belt and Road Initiative, that means it gives access to Indian Ocean as well as to get uh, gas supplies from uh, Persian Gulf side. So, how would India counter the issues with the China Myanmar agreement? Because the Strait of Malacca also can be uh, some sort of a tip of the balance between balance between the two naval powers, China and India. 
the thing is that uh, sir as you have said that they uh, uh, Myanmar has given us this uh, the roadway to china to establish an economic corridor or something like that uh, that uh, the thing is that that the once the trust thing is considered how much is this project is going to help the myanmar is itself in the uh, in, in a doubtful position in the myanmar government and myanmar government has recently one telecast one uh, 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 one press in the one press conference which was being created uh, given and addressed by its foreign minister is that that uh, they are in a verge of rethinking the policy which which we had they has implemented and come into an agreement with china because if you all aware of the one thing that uh, right now the chinese political party has started uh, de- deliberately in human uh, uh, aggression against the buddhist people and now myanmar and thailand those who have this type of uh, uh, for very long age they have practicing the buddhism in one or the other part now they need to rethink whether we are going with this whether we must go with this country who are keep on killing our sites or we uh, we want to restrain some other policy this highway which i am talking about is also uh, is a way because india is not that much uh, do, uh, doing in this uh, pro- Yeah, that you must complete it on time, so that the new capabilities and new developments can take place. Because they want, in some of the other manner, they want to switch over from China. Because if, uh, what they are facing is that uh, uh, Thailand also cancels two or the three, uh, four, four to five agreements with China because of same reason. Because whenever they ask for the technology transfer, workflow transfer, they deny. completely deny and when they say ki how we we are going to if some of the other thing gets uh, malpractice or something else how we are going to maintain it then they say you must ask with us we will go come and maintain it now these types of policy in uh, uh, re- uh, pol- uh, these types of uh, arrangements and these type of thinking do take a uh, and uh, uh, do take it uh, sometimes uh, re- uh, do time uh, do take a Uh, second opinion and also initiate a rethinking whether these countries really want to initiate the project with uh, china on because uh, we seen uh, as the myanmar is considered the new the government has a opening hand with the chinese counterpart but again when they have asked related to the technology transfer and other things transfer they are in a very uh, first and first position because chinese counterpart they not didn't able to give them the perfect answer that yes where whether we are going to give you the technological advancement or other things or not so we can say that yes uh, uh, india do have a upper hand that and in future as in 20, 2025 it was been considered as the date where when uh, these uh, this highway is going to deliver us uh, start delivering us with the better development infrastructure and everything the, the date was 2025 is considered as uh, the main thing now we have to see the future how much this going to help us out. and the policy of india is going to help us out. because right now we cannot say as it's in in a initial uh, not in a initial in a uh, 80% completion position once this project gets fully completed then we can say that yes as per the chinese uh, and myanmar cooperation is there that uh, that yes uh, in one way they are uh, yes uh, they are cooperating with them but in a, a second they they are rethinking on the policy related to chinese involvement in their projects because uh, that as for the trust is there they are zero uh, chinese are under a zero uh, capability related to the trust uh, making
Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, as you rightly mentioned about uh, you know the persecution of the Buddhist, uh, this is not, I believe, uh, just a question of uh, Buddhist people in China, but also the Muslims as well as uh, the Christians. The other day, uh, sir, uh, let me just share with you. I was going through a report published by International Commission of Religi Religious Freedom. Uh, this is an organization, international organization based in the USA. So basically, what is happening in China is uh, it's not the international organization; it's a commission of the US. I think so. Uh, but has an international appeal, has an international ah. jurisdiction. Yeah, that makes it international. So, uh, according to that report, the China is waging an unprecedented war on religion. So, on one hand, it is the Muslims, the you know the case of Uyghurs who are being persecuted. Second, the Buddhists are being pledged to allegiance to the Chinese Communist Party. And at the same time, the Christians, the Baptist Christians, the Catholic Christians, different denominations, they are coerced uh, Christian churches to take down their crosses or to shut down. Now, all these uh, things are happening uh, under state administration for religious affairs, which was set up in 1951 when China was uh, newly embracing, you know, the communism under Mao, which allows five religious organizations to exist under the state's control. A party sanctioned form of Buddhism, a party sanctioned form of Taoism, a party sanctioned form of Islam, a party sanctioned form of Protestantism and communist party sanctioned form of Catholicism. So this is what is happening in China. It is what has been happening in China since 1951. Now, since we are basically talking about taking strategic measures to counter the China and you, as you rightly mentioned in, in the beginning of, uh, you know, your lecture that uh, we don't have to get into a conventional war. The strategy has completely changed. Now you have spoken about uh, the, the, the road strategy. You have also spoken about, uh, you know, uh, diplomatic uh, measures. But I want to draw your attention uh, to these internal problems that China is actually inculcating for its own citizens. Can international community raise its voice against those issues? Because how long can China hide itself? How long can the Communist Party of China hide itself behind the iron curtain and claim that it is their internal issue i think the time has come for all of us to raise our voice in support in solidarity of those communities the christian the buddhist the taos who are being persecuted in the china uh, what is what is your take on it see as per my take on this issue as a religious uh, thing is considered and the religious the commission of religious freedom and uh, this thing is considered the what my uh, understanding is that that yes china is uh, deliberately uh, uh, moving towards an inhuman nature on these religions whether it is muslim is considered or whether buddhist is considered and any other position is considered see the main objective of the we must understand the main objective of the communist party which was ruling china they are least concerned what you are following or what is your belief, what you want to do, what you want to consider. They are only only and only one thinking on their uh, mind that they want to implement the communist rule. They want to delete each and everything. If they are so much concerned about the thing, then the, this uh, the right now or the inclusion which we are facing right now from China, which was not uh, concerned about their so much problems and everything, religious and uh, other problems, then the inclusion which we are facing right now, this there's no need of this inclusion. If you are so much focused upon your own problems and, and the rectif rectification of your own problems. And as per the commission you have just mentioned, uh, the reports of the commission on the uh, other things, it's uh, mentioned, you have mentioned. I somehow have a uh, other view on the commission's report which was been published by this US commission which I am going to uh, have a discussion on you and some of the other but uh, as for the commission report is concerned it was rightly said that yes uh, some of these uh, religious uh, religious understanding and belief uh, 
has been deleted by the indian uh, communist party of the china chinese communist party because when you have a belief you have a understanding and when you have a belief and understanding you you have started thinking in a outer page which they do not want to uh, happen and you started thinking on the outer page of what they want to project you then you must start raising questions what we are uh, what they uh, what they are facing is uh, right now is that uh, people started questioning their policies that's the main problem which they are facing that's why many times this has been seen that many activity activists which was been there in uh, muslim uh, and uh, buddhist religion they have been deliberately uh, uh, vanished from the society in uh, in one or the other night in the night uh, night hours and then be ad- ab- abducted or killed in the night in a night go because china do not want any other person to think out of out of the box what it projects also and what it says that uh, whatever the party has the thinking it wants that the people should also have the same thinking and what is going on nepal also right now nepal is also uh, uh, facing this type of communist nature and what the government wants to think then that only uh, people wants to think and in both the countries there is nothing we can have a redressal uh, against the government because uh in if we talk about the china uh, chinese policy you cannot have any any sort of reversal whether you should get if the government declares you are declares you that you are not uh, capable or you are not so much uh, possibly uh, uh, part of the chinese community then you cannot do anything you do not have any place or any forum that you can go and say yes your rights are being uh, hampered or your rights are being uh, destroyed so i think that's also an uh, advantages uh, position for the communist party that there is no one uh, there is no one to counter them and also there is no one to actually say that yes you are wrong in some way it's the, see the thing is that you have raised us thing that we must come together all countries come together <coughs> and started speaking related to the <coughs> inclusion and the inhuman activity goes goes on on this religion but the thing is that was the uh, we cannot compel china ki yes you must follow this because china is standing at a verge that we cannot compel him to do something else secondly they have a communist type of thinking you cannot change you have seen in india also how much you have changed the communist thinking in india for last so last so many years still we are facing the communist uh, uh, thinking problem in the democratic rule and in, in the democratic rule so how you can uh, take out a, a second view that chinese who has been uh, governed by so long by the chinese uh, by the communists will change its seven uh, uh, change into a uh, uh, turn itself into a some of the other po- uh, policy on the other uh, governmental ruling the thing is that we must understand is that these all the commissions and all the international organization which we are right now is uh, there it do not have any implementation policy and when you have whom you are countering we must uh, also see this how you can bring a resolution against the person who is the permanent uh, body in the un how you can bring a uh, resolution against the permanent body in the un is going to never accept that yes is going to always counter that yes or use its veto power against it so that these organization are uh, unhelpful or not able to help in a full flesh because the governing council which was there the five six countries governing council which was there china is the part of that governing council and whenever any move if it's is so easy and now till now that in, in india must have become the permanent member of un 
now the policy too gets changed changed as uh, as uh, the these organization can only work so the uh, these organization only have a upper hand and it's a critic on this organization also that they only have a upper hand where the uh, country doesn't have a permanent status on the un council because they can criticize very well these organization if this commission is so well versed with the facts uh, there is also atrocities going on on the, uh, the that religion on uh, that catholic and uh, protestants thing going on in the us also if the uh, society and the commission is so concerned about these thing then they have mu must mention that also in their report but they are not mentioning secondly russia in russia uh, we are facing a, uh, another uh, problem that is uh, uh, that uh, muslims uh, thing that uh, muslims will be treated as the terrorist russia has given this uh, opinion in many, uh, 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 its policy has been now has been uh, diverted towards muslim community uh, the aggression policy because they it, russia is also becoming a victim of terrorism so now they have changed the total policy and said that the whole religion has a problem without seeing that the yes the certain group that the terrorist doesn't belong to any religion now needs to see that yes these organizations do not have that much implementation that yes we can say that they have, we can stand with them we can protest against them uh with uh, mother stand with them and protest with them to, against some of the other country which uh, which has a permanent status in the un board so first you have a first you have to think about the flexibility of the this membership permanent membership then only we can have an accusing power of these uh, to these countries because see there is a one that i like to quote here there is nothing to do with this uh, the question you you have asked. there is a uh, problem which is there in uh, israel uh, and uh, us israel relationship when they have uh, given a permanent status to something as this discussion is going on and 136 countries have voted against us on the issue which was being raised by the us in the un general council related to the uh, uh, giving the uh, uh, permanent status as the jerusalem is considered was some of the other had just forgotten the name and what they have done is that they have in the un it was un general assembly where the press secretary the most lowest pe uh, person which we considered as the uh, diplomat in the un that person has that person has simply said in front of the Uh, around 126 countries that we will that we will see when you are going to come in front of us and ask something that the vote has gone against us and israel and the israel uh, us press secretary is standing in front of us uh, all the countries and saying this sentence that we are the permanent members of the council remember this and we will Uh, when uh, when you are going to come in front of us to ask something or to uh, get something we will rethink about your uh, uh, policy and uh, other things whether we want to give it this this will be considered as the history that you have embarked and goes against us so these things do get a little bit crazy and little bit uh, problematic when we are considered as per the uh, protest against some uh, country Thank very you. elaborative very very nice answer thank you so much uh, i hope there are no more questions and it is also uh, you know almost uh, 6 4:30 we should uh, conclude this program so before we conclude this program i just want to uh, remind you to kindly please uh, fill up the feedback form that i have just uh, shared with you and uh, what is the take away from this lecture of course we have uh, started uh, Uh, with uh, the friendship road that uh, the india has constructed as a, as a strategic uh, a strategic barrier for china but however one thing that we have understood that the situation is not really the way what we understand right 
on one hand the china has been continuously increasing its influence on the other hand india is also uh, you know uh, deliberating upon to what extent it is able to create its influence in the international platforms on one hand china has its internal issues on other hand china is also a permanent member of the united nations security council and uh, as uh, sir rightly mentioned that at this juncture you know it is it is practically it's very difficult for the world to tackle the power of the dragon but at the end as i always believe whether it is a communism or whether it is any sort of injustice which has been incurred by the china they will always have to pay the price and that price will be ultimately a conclusion of the justice so thank you thank you so much uh, for the participation thank you so much uh, advocate uh, harsh chaturvedi for your time thank you so much for your questions we will meet again thank you so much and this lecture has been recorded it will be on youtube very soon thank you so much have a great evening guys